Hey, this is Bjorn Rebney, CEO and Chairman of Bellator MMA. You're watching ProMMANow.com. Hey, Daniel Fido here for ProMMANow.com, the one and only Randy Torres. How's it going, sir? Good. To see you. Good. What, uh, what basically brought about this whole thing? How hard of a, was it, of a decision was it to decide to come to this by TV for Bellator? Well, I see Sharon and, and Kevin Kay approached me about being part of the show they were trying to build, and uh, you know, I think they knew significantly how that would affect me going forward. So then it wasn't a small decision for me. It took me some time to you know, weigh it out. Uh, I think in a lot of ways give, you know, give the UFC uh, the option to, to try to do with the company in some significant way. And they didn't really have, have anything that they wanted to use before. So uh, obviously I had to do that delicately. I couldn't disclose what the offers on the table were. But, uh, I had to sign a 98 to hear the pitch, so uh, it is what it is. Um, and we kind of been anticipated what the response would be uh, from Zufa and, and it, was, uh, it was what we thought. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of that, does it, does, it, does it hurt you personally to hear Dana say these things and say you're not a nice guy, you're really Captain America and whatnot? Yeah. Do you know Dana's Dana? And, uh, of course I know Dana's Dana. But all, all those things from him before. And, uh, uh, it's not surprising. And, uh, you know, he does the same thing you know, with the fighters all the time. You know, he's trying to get Fedor, he's the number one fighter in the world. When Fedor won't sign, Fedor's a piece of crap and he's not that good. I mean, it's, it's typical, it's a tool to, to, to what he does and how he uses things. To so there's no surprise. How concerning is it that it might affect? Ryan's career, maybe he'll get matched up with someone tougher. You think once he talked with Ryan, gave him a phone call, you think he, he'll, he'll back Ryan. Ryan said he wants to stay in the UFC. And you know what? Ryan's his own man. Ryan has uh, created his, his, his own fighting style. He, he does the work. He's obviously uh, improved significantly and has shown that he deserves to be at that level and, and compete there. Uh, Do you like that technically? He has his own style. I mean, he plays absolutely. an outside kicking game. He plays a guard submission he's, he's game. He's got a great submission game. He's the better submission guy I have, it was for sure. Uh, you know, I had a unique background and set of skills that I brought in and made my fighting style. And you know, he isn't trying to ride my my shirt tails at all. It's almost more you know, the burden that he's trying to use same last night. He should be. He has been since he was an amateur. He takes that on the stride. He's a very level-headed kid. He does the work. He's going to hit it three rounds. You know, I think Ryan's comment was, "Well, I don't understand why they'd be hard on me. They, they stand to make a lot more money off me than I'm going to make off them." So, uh, you know, I think Ryan's got a, a great attitude about it. Obviously, had some, some very serious discussions with him about what was going on, and, uh, and so he's been aware of it from the start and, and how the, you know, the decisions I made could potentially affect his future as well. So, do you really like that Bellator focuses on the fighters, their own destiny? Um, you know, it sounds like the re the show is going to be very much about learning different skills, filling up gaps in your game. Well, the fight masters, I think, is, is that's the emphasis. That was one of the things that appealed to me about the pitch. Uh, you know, uh, so I'm excited about that opportunity to hopefully affect some young athletes and, and, and make them better. And how's the movie crew going? I spent a couple days on the set of um, Without Guard or Absent Guard, Rush. With Rush. And yeah. they they were talking to me, and they said they were really impressed with both your acting and the fight scene that you had. With them. Yeah, well, that was a lot of fun, I and mean, what a unique night that was, you know, on the park garage in the pouring down rain in LA uh, with, with those amazing backdrops in the LA skyline and that uh, rush was a lot of fun. I think uh, probably raised some eyebrows some of the things that, that I did in, in the course of that movie. They were talking a lot about it. I talked guy, to Benny yeah. the Jed as the choreographer. I saw some nice stills of you in the you know, cop car and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. What's uh, you're still wearing handcuffs? <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, One wondered about that. Yeah. What, what about what's coming up in March? You said you had another film. Yeah, I have a movie coming up in March called Distant Shore, and I'll be playing uh, with Scott Atkins, kind of a psycho thriller. Uh, play the psycho. Yeah, well, you like playing the bad <laughs> so, guys. It's fun well, you know, make a turn. I, this will be my third opportunity to, to kind of play the the, uh, the antagonist in the movie. I did first with Scorpion King 2 and then. Uh, Obviously, uh, Rush, I play a, 
the main antagonist in that movie. So uh, uh, there's something about getting to you know, kind of do some of the things that you would never do in real life. Uh, and then Expendables 3 in yeah, August? Absolutely. Them? So we're going to ramp that up. It's, it's going to start shooting in, in August. We're supposed to lie more than double them again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, I can't wait for the show on Spike. And I uh, hope it's a great success. Do you have any, last question, any idea who some of your coaching, your assistant coaching staff may be? Well, I, I obviously know who they are and, and I'm narrowing it down. But you get two and, and uh, that's the stuff that I want to discuss right now. All right. Well, thank you guys for calling MMAnow.com. I'm Dan the Wolfman signing out.